off. We're talking about the territories. And well, Bruce... we're talking about bookers. Yes. They're not like, you know, bookkeepers. Which was which was which was great. One time I was traveling on a plane, and uh, Pat and Vince had all their books out. We had so the books that we used to use were like uh, accounting ledgers almost, but they're you know huge. And we're sitting there and going through, and we're writing all of our stuff and book of the towns, talking to each other. And the guy sitting next to me <laughs> says to me, "Oh, he must be the bookkeeper." I looked at him. He was talking about Pat. I said, I looked at him and said, you could say that. And so, yeah, it's the bookers. Don't have no bookers no more. Booker. Not T. Because there is a booker, Booker T, but he's my buddy. So it's all good. I saw nothing but great feedback about last week's show. I think people uh, really enjoyed uh, an opportunity to hear you talk about the good old days before things really, really changed in the eighties. Well, it was different. You know, it was different. It was a different way of, of, of running the business. And as uh, Nick Bockwinkle used to say, we all used to say it was cottage industry. And by that, I mean that people ran their own territories in their own areas and never, you know, never really branched out. They didn't expand. They didn't, um, franchise if you will and they kept everything inside and a lot of it was cash business so i would venture to guess that you know not everything was reported per se to government officials for their taxes at the end of the year and um it was it was a different business and then it became big business and it spanned the globe it became a global phenomenon so um yeah it was it was a lot different at, at the time because you had a promoter and the promoter was the one that owned the town if you could you know again another thing that i always argue what do you what do you really own right uh, okay you know they owned the town so they had the tv they had the buildings they ran the town they did the promotion uh, they did the legwork. They were the local guy in town. And then you had your booker and you had your booking office. And the booking office is what supplied the talent to the promoters around the country or around the territory, if you will, and sometimes the country. Well, let's talk about another part of the country. We got to talk about Texas. And when we think about Texas wrestling, we got to talk about Fritz von Erich. We teased it last week, of course, uh, man, world-class, one of the more iconic territories recently featured on the silver screen for the iron claw movie. Uh, talk to us about world-class and, and what Fritz brought as a booker. Well, long before world-class, you know, Fritz started world-class because Fritz finally got fed up with the NWA. I think everybody eventually just got fed up with the NWA. Um, the NWA had become a joke. Uh, it become um, just three letters. That's all it was. It, it provided nothing, you know, for its promoters that were members. So, you know, you go back to the early formation of Fritz and Ed, Ed McLemore in Dallas, Texas, who in the 60s, I believe it was, the, the booking office in Texas was always in Houston, run by Morris Siegel. And Morris Siegel was a predecessor to Paul Bosch. When Morris Siegel passed away, Paul bought the promotion, which was called the Gulf Athletic Club, from Morris Siegel's widow. And Fritz and Paul didn't get along. And this was an opportunity for Fritz to have his own his own territory for him to book. And Fritz kind of edged out Ed McLemore, and uh, Fritz became the boss and the booker and the the or the owner of the territory. Uh, Fritz brought in several different bookers. He brought in you know Gary Hart, who was probably 
the guy with the most longevity as far as booking Dallas. Uh, Red Bastine, I know, came in and helped for a little while. But, uh, you know, Gary was Gary was the foundation, and Gary was the guy that was there for the longest. Paul then, you know, was focusing on Houston. Paul was like, you take the book, I'll book my talent through the Dallas booking office. Southwest Sports was the name of the company that Fritz formed that was – the company that ran Dallas and the company that uh, supported the booking of all of the talent. And Paul decided to use Fritz. And it was, it was kind of a wrestling war there for a while um, because people were battling for power. And you know what happens when, when there's a split in things, you know, there's guys that, well, I'm loyal. I'm loyal to this guy or I'm loyal to that guy. There were people that were loyal to the Houston office and there were people that were loyal to the Dallas office. And usually you got to pick one or the other. And if you try and run the middle and you try and, and do both, you know, in your double secret uh, gay fave spy, uh, that doesn't always work out. And that's kind of what happened with the gentleman by the name of uh, Otto Kuss. Otto Kuss and Marvin Jones were the referees. And a lot of times they would carry the finishes and they would be the ones in charge in the towns that would come in and say, okay, here's what we're doing tonight. This is coming from the office. And they both kind of got burned and, and everything... Uh, Eventually settled down. Otto settled down at the uh, Slender Bollock uh, Health Club in Houston. And don't ever know what really happened to Marvin Jones, but Marvin ended up going back to Dallas for a very, very short stint. They took him back, but all those guys kind of got ostracized from the business overall uh, because of, you know, they couldn't pick a side. They picked both. And they tried to work both, and they tried to give each other, give each office information on the other, which doesn't always work out, man. And so um, it was it was some interesting times. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple Podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-Free Shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like Title Chase, Eric Fires Back, Conversations with Conrad, and The Insiders. Plus new series like The Book with David Crockett, Monday Mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick, and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early, you can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And hey, when you do, the first week is completely free at freeshows.com.